Okay, we're drinking Springbank 12, one of my favorite kick your ass, damn you whiskeys. We'll see. Bring it, Springbank 12. And well, I've got a joke to go with it. That's, um, hold on. We, uh, uh -oh. we just might as well. Might as well, might as well. Wait, wait. Is it even? There's one tenth of an ounce more in that one. Yeah, it seems fair. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Do you really want to start down this path? Nah, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So here we go. Okay. All right. So you're ready for my. Oh, it's so oh, good. Oh. That's so good. Are you ready for my fake Scottish accent? Almost did a little dance. This is for all my <laughs> Scottish people here yeah. who uh, get the chance to make fun of me for my Scottish accent. Meaty. It's meaty. Oh, it's definitely meaty. Good. Right. So a girl gets on a bus in Glasgow and the bus driver turns to her and says, Oi, that fella is the ugliest baby I've ever seen. You should be ashamed of yourself bringing a baby like that out in public. That is disgusting. And uh, the bus driver... Uh, she goes to the back of the bus, and uh, she's crying. And a gentleman leans over her shoulder and says, Oh, where are you crying, lass? And she says, Well, that bus driver up there just said the most horrible thing to me that anyone's ever said before. He said, Well, you can't let them get away with that. You've got to get up there and give them a piece of your mind. I'll hold your monkey. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite Scottish joke. And it's because, to me, that's me, and <laughs> maybe you, and it's Springbank. It's that even when you're trying to be nice, you're still an ass. <laughs> and Springbank, to me, now I know and love this one a lot, because uh, in the class, I do a, um, the first night of class for a normal business classes, we'll do a tour of Scotland. And this is one of the whiskeys in my five region tour, which by the way, for anyone checking is, if you, my tour to introduce people to the five regions is, Akintoshan 12 for Lowland, Deanston 12 for Highland, uh, Glen Ross Bourbon Cask for Spaceside, Springbank 12 Cask for Campbelltown, and uh, Boonahaben 12 for Isla. And I will explain those if anyone ever wants to know why, maybe in a video, but um, it's just a good spectrum. It's a great spectrum of everything, and I really love Springbank. To me, Springbank is like the guy in Up, the old man in Up. This is. He's, Iodine to me. Yeah, no, it's wet band-aid. Yeah, wet bit. Well, oh. <laughs> it's wet rubber. Yeah, right. The wet band-aid smell. But, but here's the thing. Just like the old and, dude and up who was a crusty old ass. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, he. Uh, you're just. You, be, you're you're a crusty old. Ass yeah. Ass, so you like crusty. Old I ass. do. I really do. So behind that, he's really just a total softy, right? And so Springbank to me presents up front. Pure aggression and brine and iodine and heavy barrel notes, but if you can get past that initial, uh, right. it's a sherry cask finished whiskey. So and so, there's all these dark fruit notes in the background. This, I'm, a, I'm a little. And by the way, this is Jimmy Legs, one of his favorites. No, this it's his profile photo. It's fantastic. I'm a little concerned about this whiskey, though. Why? Well, I'm a little concerned about my experience with this whiskey at this moment. Because okay. uh, you're not has, getting any of the aggression. It has a reputation for being, yes, you know, a take you out behind the woodshed and and uh, and treat you naughty. But and, not like George Stagg Jr. Not well. And I'm I'm getting this, and it's like, man, these are really big, rich flavors. But I don't, I feel I feel like they're still candy sweet. I should be at least sensing a little bit more violence than I am. Yes, the flavors are big. no. Yes, no, no, the no. flavors are loud. Think of it like this: but Do you drink I'm, black coffee? Yeah. Okay, does it still taste overwhelmingly bitter? No. Yeah, that's it. Okay. It just means you drank enough stuff that the dominant notes are subtle, and that means that you can get access to all the things behind it. So now, if you're a coffee drinker, if you get to the point where you can be like, oh, that's a Colombian bean. Right. Oh, that's a Kenya roast. Oh, that's, and so okay. on, pea berry, then you've gotten past the dominant bitterness. If you can get an aggressive scotches to the point where the heavy, smoky, aggressive stuff is a background note. Okay, so the meatiness 
that I had at the very beginning. Right. I've totally gotten used to that. I'm not getting that anymore. No, it's gone now. It's gone. It'll be that way within two or three sips. Now it's really intense, dark, rich honey mm -hmm. and fruit. I'm getting the sherry cask finish. Absolutely. And I'm getting just the faintest hint of some smoky bits on the aftertaste after everything else dies down, after, after the sweetness finally dissipates. It's just a hint of the smoke now. Now this is a blend of bourbon finished cask and sherry finished casks. Mm. So, um, and here's the cool thing about Springbank. Springbank is two and a half times distilled. Mm -hmm. Now how do you do that? You just yank it out of there halfway. Yeah, no, no, exactly. It was actually confusing. They actually put it on the website because I'd asked multiple people about this. So they do three whiskeys, Long Grow, Hazel Burn, and Spring Bank. Mm -hmm. Long Grow is twice distilled, very classic Scottish distillation. Hazel Burn is three times distilled, like Akintoshin, and unpeated. Right. So it's not so smoky. Why would you distill something more than once? Uh, well, the first time, all, all you're doing is trying to bump up the alcohol content okay. from a beer level of 8 to 10 percent or 6 um, up to a 30, 40, 50 range. Yeah. And then the second distillation, you increase it even higher and then you make cuts, uh. right? Or you'll keep a wide cut on the second one, on the third one make narrow cuts and then that's what goes into the barrel, right? Mm. What they're doing is they've got three stills. The first one is the low wine still. It gets everything up to around a 20 to 30, they said. And then they started in the second one. The second one gets it up to a 50%. Then they take mostly product from the second distillation, add to it product from the first distillation, mm -hmm. and distill that combo a third time. That's what gives them two and a half times distilled. Okay. So this is Campbelltown. Yeah. Does Isla traditionally have more smoke? No, I have more smoke, but less iodine and less rubber and those kinds of notes. Okay. So, uh, I find those notes in Kilcarran. I find those notes in Glen Scotia. Uh, Campbelltown used to have 100 plus distilleries. Mm. It was one of the busiest distillery locations in all of Scotland, other than the space, even the space side, as far as miles around. Right? This is and it? then they all collapsed, and there's only four now. So, um, three. Not necessarily beginner friendly for a lot of beginners. Mm -mm. This is super intense stuff. But hold on, there's a lot of beginners that say I jumped to like a Lefroy 10 Isla. They might like it. Could, could people go from a Lefroy to this? It's so sweet. A lot of people, those people don't like sherry it finish. I'm, I'm, right? I've had this before and I'm surprised at how, how much sweetness I'm Here's getting. Here's what's weird about this is uh, when I give this tasting, it's almost always women that gravitate to this first above all the pretty stuff yeah. and it will regularly be women who've never had whiskey before hmm. and everyone will be like oh my god that's so and then there'll be this one lady who's like actually i really like this one to me this is like <laughs> the sweetness of a girl scout with the aggression of a meth head <laughs> this is a girl scout on meth that should go on their bottle <laughs> description yeah it's a, it's girl, a girl scout sc on meth <laughs> <laughs> Manhattan. Now, I love Springbank. Manhattan. No bartender can get it right. Mm. Claiming to be part Welsh and mostly Scottish is what a pure mooch would say when whiskey is on the line. <laughs> so apparently I am genetically perfected. <laughs> to be for, a mooch. For, for, to be a mooch. <laughs> uh, Ryan Wine Dang. Oh. There was a guy earlier today in my store complaining about them putting color in their stuff. Yeah, those are the snobs, man. But buying something else and saying I should try this with Coke? <laughs> really? Wait, which Coke was he talking about? Yeah, I think that's where it went a little wrong. <laughs> right. Oh, well, they put color in this. You're like, Coke has color, bro. Caleb Candon. Uh, how close would a blend of 60% Lefroy tin uh, and 30% Monkey Shoulder and 10% Yamazaki 12 come to Lefroy 32? Interesting. Should we find out? We should find out. Son, why was this? I want to try his recipe. Why was this not the first question I read? I don't know. All right. So Lefroy ten, monkey shoulder, and Yamazaki twelve. Okay. How much ten? Sixty percent. So a little over half. And then of course we're gonna have to compare it to Lefroy thirty two. Ah! Dude, I really am running out of Lefroy thirty two. I hey, don't know how much I have left. You copied and pasted. I know for science. For science. Uh, okay, 60%. so I really do need a measuring thing over here, hang on a second. A measuring thing. Okay, 60%. 60%. Okay. And then, 30% monkey shoulder. 60-30. Okay. 
Got it. 10% Yamazaki 12. Okay. 10%? 10% Yamazaki 12. I don't think this is going to do it, uh, mainly, because that Lafroy 32 has so much more fruit in it than anything that's going to provide. Now, for science, we're going to have to compare it to oh, I know. That's just, right. just as much log of our log <laughs> There's no way. as the Lafroy 32, because volume matters. Okay, I will tell you, that's a lovely whiskey. But it's way too bright. Way too bright and effervescent to be the Lafroy 32. Mmm. I reserve judgment. All right. There it is. Okay. Yeah. That 32 is bright, but it's got more fruit in it. And I don't mean dark fruit like plum. I mean like a lighter fruit. That's the 32? Mm hmm Yeah. Lighter fruit. But... I'd say that's like 70... Nah, it's more like 60 to 65% there. Well, let me try some more Lafroy 32. <laughs> now, what I want to know is what happens when we add to your mix an equal amount of Springbank 12. A whiskey so magical, your c*** is blown off! <laughs> <laughs> it's just like... I picture it like a like the end of a gun that blows and peels back. I, I picture as opposed to exploding off like a rocket. I, I picture a shaped hole through the wall, <laughs> with the, you know, like cartoon style. Bing. So, um, ooh, try that, Dylan. That's actually closer to the Freud Thirty Two. Dylan Burris, why did y'all stop the audience ending to with the toast? Uh, sent one with some friends, but I noticed y'all seem to have stopped editing in the audience audience editions. Here's the thing, I forgot that there were direct messages on YouTube, and that's where you sent it, and I never saw it. Um, so it will be in very soon, and we are always looking for people to send us ending toasts. Sure, that's fine. So we're going to clean up the process. Yes, because what do we do? We, if anybody has sent it up toast before and it didn't make it onto the show, it means we didn't find it. Yep. And they're being sent to too many different channels, yep. too many different uh, platforms. So if you want to send a toast of you toasting the channel, then in the description below, there's three steps. Record a toast, upload it to YouTube. If you have a channel, you can upload it to just the upload button. You can mark it as unlisted if you want to. Yep. That means it doesn't show up in search results publicly. The only people that can watch it is, is people who have a direct link. So send us a direct link in our comments and put hashtag toast. And then we'll use that. So we'll uh, periodically search for hashtag toast. See who did a toast to the channel. Doesn't have to be our toast, it can be Although, your own toast. And I think that closes us out. Yeah. That try this whiskey. Finish the Lafroy 32 as my gift to you. Happy birthday. Your gift. Your gift is the people's gift. <laughs> this is a non-profit school. I feel like I'm Did in you buy the 32? Some superhero did movie you buy or something the at the moment when you're like, this is for you. No, it's not for me. It's for the people. The people. <laughs> mm. Damn, that's good. That's not bad, though. It's damn good. All right. A lot of damn good whiskey going on. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.